well, let's move on a little bit here. Um, uh, whenever we Google you, up pops uh, an icon of all time, David Bowie. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, and, and, yeah, yeah. And I know David Bowie was actually a fan of yours uh, and, and liked you. Uh, you were in Absolute Beginners with them as Big Jill. Uh, along, with the, along with Patsy Kensett and uh, uh, and uh, tell us what it's like meeting Bowie. I'd met him um, six months before. I was in his um, it won a what won it won a Grammy or, or something for Jazzing for Blue Jean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also directed by Julian Temple. I had and I and a lot of the people that were in Absolute Beginners were in that kind of mix of of that that show and I'd never really um I, I liked him but I I wasn't a super fan and uh because I kept thinking my god how could you get him in bed he's so thin <laughs> not that other people not that other people <laughs> would think along those lines but that you know I just was looking at him like that and I liked his songs but I was more into Marvin Gaye and all the black artists that came over from America yeah. um so the sound to me because he sounded like um, Anthony Newley, yeah, do you yeah. know, for me, and I knew who, who Anthony Newley Joan was. Joan Collins' loved... husband, wasn't it? Pardon? Joan Collins' husband, Anthony Newley. Yeah, no, they, they, they was, but anyway, so I, um, so I wasn't a super fan, so I was kind of not in a, a, a space of, I couldn't talk to him. Yeah. The hush went round, bow is coming, bow is coming, this is onto the set, four o'clock in the morning behind the Savoy, and as he came through, I looked at him and of course, you know, I wanted to go, oh, hello, hello, David, hello, Mr. Bowie. You know, I wanted to say something. Of course, what come, my mouth opened and I heard my voice say, <laughs> I heard my voice say, oh, you haven't got a, uh, you haven't got a brown eye at all. I said, you've got a big pupil. That's what I said to him. Because, <laughs> because at the time you have to remember that there wasn't so many, um, now everything's on the internet, isn't it? You can just look it yeah. up, it's there. You know, you can beam in, beam out. Do you know what I mean? You can sort of see what's going on, but I mean, they they made, they the information that came out was he had a brown eye yeah. and a blue eye. Yes, yeah, of course. And um, anyway, uh, we started chatting and he said to me, what made you choose a name like Ferret? Do you know what I, mean? and I said, I didn't, it's my family name. And he said, you know, Madame Ferre. And he said, <laughs> <laughs> and he then, you know, was absolutely charming. And he, he said, you know, what's, what influences you and all, all the things, the different uh, songs. And I said, oh, we used to sing a song called Round Any Old Time, you know, that old uh, English musical song, which he knew word for word. Yeah. We sang it together as if we were old mates. You know, Call round any old time, make yourself at home. And if you think about it, he <laughs> would be going ground control to Major Tom. <laughs> you know, or um, what's his name? Uh, Anthony Newley, you know, what kind of fool? They, they all have this kind of cockney kind of, what kind of fool am I? Anyway, I'm going on. Uh, but six months later, I'll ask you this because we're, we're, we're um, running out of time. Obviously, the t the, you're, you're a huge hit on the gay scene. I mean, uh, everyone knows E. Ferret's name, or, uh, names, uh, particularly late seventies and eighties when uh, AIDS and HIV raised its head. And I know you were a bit like the British Bet Midler for us, weren't you? And uh, you must have been affected yourself personally by by the epidemic. Uh, and uh, how did it affect you? It was um, it was the most extraordinary time uh, at the beginning of it in about 81, 82, which is much earlier than people put down. Yeah. You know, uh, friends started saying, you know, I've got some I've got like a, something wrong with my blood. It's like a, a, like leukemia. This is how it was kind of explained to them because nobody knew, nobody kind of knew, nobody could place it. I'd come back from New York in 79, been to Fire Island and everything. Yeah. And I found some pictures uh, recently. Uh, a huge swathe of my life went. Uh, my life being my loved ones and friends 
of some as young as 27. Some went on for many, you know, decades afterwards. And we have lots of medicines now. So I was thrilled that throughout this COVID thing, that they feel that they've come up with a vaccination or something to help people because it is actually, uh, although it's kind of now not spoken about, it is absolutely massive in uh, certain countries in the world yeah. as a major cause of illness and death. I remember, because uh, I watched the programme on TV, um, I, I steeled myself. I couldn't watch it in a whole batch. I watched one and then was traumatised um, and then watched, started watching it again. Because what, what, however the information was given out, yeah. and Diana obviously went on to, um, Diana, that's Princess Diana, went on to try to quell that. However it went out, it frightened everybody. Yeah. So therefore I would be in the um, mild May um, hospital with a dying friend whose parents were outside who wouldn't come into the room, um, you know, just like the film, sort of the sitcom, who wouldn't come into the room because they were frightened. You're talking and I said, you have you it's the sin. Yeah, it's a scene. I couldn't remember what it's called. It, it's not that I've erased it because it was so brilliant. It's just that it's traumatic. Yeah, for a lot of people, uh, it's traumatic. And it, was it's traumatic. it was absolutely brilliant. It's one of the best pieces of uh, 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 pieces of TV that I've seen in the last decade. It was really powerful. Well, especially as those of us who were there, mm. how 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 people you know some people would say, oh, it couldn't possibly have been like that. It was and worse. Yeah. You know, uh, um, but anyway, we, uh, lots of my friends have survived, uh, gre thank God, and um, are uh, and great. But it's still a traumatic time um, because. Do you what? Do you worry now that when you see uh, um, you, you look at young gay guys uh, who some think it's an old person's disease HIV? <laughs> Seriously, do you, well, worry, heard... do, you, do you worry that people are taking uh, precautions and uh, and looking after themselves in this day and age? Well, yeah, I have um, heard through through you know just general you know how we used to hear things before the internet, okay. um, you know that people. Uh, are not worried about it at all yeah. and and actually it's risen you know it's a it's quite a and although we you know it's something although we, it can be managed it can be managed yeah. it's not something that you, if you can prevent it which you can yeah. then yeah. that's what, where we should be at but not actively uh taking no notice of it yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Now, so you were having a dinner party, a material subject now for you. What, 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 having a dinner party with four people, what four people alive or dead would you invite? Right, well, a lot of them are dead. Yeah, um, invite dead Frank people. Sinatra. Yeah. Oh, my God. Marvin Gaye. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Clark Gable. <gasps> oh, my God. Lucille Ball. Oh my God, they're, they're making a movie about her at the moment. I think, oh. uh, I can't remember who was in it. Uh, yeah, they're making a movie right now. Uh, Are they? Who's in it? We, uh, you don't know. Yeah, so I do, I, I'm having one of my moments where I can't remember. Is it like Renny Zellweger or something? She's a Australian actress, married to Tom Cruise. Oh my God. Why can't Nicole remember? Kidman? Yes, there we go, she's playing her. There were pictures of Kate Blanchard done up as her and I was hoping she was going to do it, but uh, that looks like what it is. Anyway, so back to you, it's not about me. So, <laughs> <laughs> do, uh, so let's, uh, and Lucia Ball. Um, who do you most admire music-wise now? Um, well, I still like all my old people, but I, I, I really was, I'm charmed and like Celeste. Oh, think, yeah, yeah. I think that there, she's got something. There's a lot of them, a lot of, uh, I remember when Amy Winehouse coming came Came and I thought, what's the point of even trying? Oh She's just so amazing, yeah. you know. And then, and, uh, you know, the so was, But in in modern terms, I think Celeste. A lot, a lot of the, a lot of the um, groups. I, I listened to Radio Six on um, a Sunday morning. I love that. Um, with you know, um, what's her name? Uh, Keris Matthews. And she comes up with a load of all really interesting different things. Plus, I listen to Robert Elms, who's more funk. I love funk so much. And so he, um, you know, the funky ferret. Yeah. 
I love funk so much. It's, uh, it's, just a, it's just a shame, isn't it, that in this country, our training ground is within our churches if we go to church. So you're singing, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Whereas in America, you have all those kind of, ah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you just think people come, we people come from from training. Um, uh, 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 one last question. Uh, oh, last there's, question. There's, there's rumors of a TV series about the Blitz Club and things. Who uh, and you're bound to be in it. Who, which actress would you like to play you? I don't know which actress would I like. To, yeah, I don't you know, like I having just been asked to um to see if I would play um. Madam Rita, do you remember Two Kids for Two Farthings? You remember that <laughs> thing with the unicorn? With Diana Dawes, weirdly enough. They didn't want me to be the Diana Dawes part, thank God, because I'm so old. Is the, um, well, I'm not that old. Um, they said, oh, could you play Madam Rita? It was originally played by a man. I thought, what's new? <laughs> what's new? Did you you know, tell me something I don't know. Um, I think one of the Paul's drag queens will end up playing you. <laughs> I know. Because <laughs> you know I mean? well, it has to be, because um, forever, and people never really understand that, this, what I'm about to say, it doesn't, I always had people come up to me and say, excuse me, are you a man or a woman? And I always think to myself, would I have chosen, would I have gone, <laughs> would I have gone to a surgeon and say to him, make me look like this? No, there's just one, uh, one added little tiny question here. So back when you were doing Absolute Beginners, uh, you know, playing a, a, a gay character or a lesbian character could be the kiss of death uh, uh, to people's careers. Now everyone and their mother's playing a, play, a, a, a LGBT character. How, how did it affect your career playing Big Jill? I never thought of it like that because I never think of one's sexuality as being the That's main criteria of... Um, you know, it's just part of you, isn't it? It's so not. There was the stage, there was, uh, you know, the actors felt it was a kiss of death to play a, a character. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, and it was, it's only such, uh, such I know the floodgates have opened, thank God. Uh, yeah. but, um, but I just wondered if, if you ever got, did, did anyone uh, uh, suggest that might not be a good thing? No, no, not at all. Not in the, my circles that I, I mix in. We're, it's all, inclusive what i just want to see much more of you on tv because you're one of the funniest people and one of the most enjoyable people to interview uh oh. and you're a little a little gem that, that uh, <laughs> i i think she'd be on every week on tv maybe behind the bar in eastenders i think it'd be brilliant <laughs> there. <laughs> you go, you go, go, go. Go. instead of in the corner going oh. the party's over it's time to no i think that there's you know time for you know, one thing out of this lockdown is that we're all rushing around for what exactly anyway? Do you, know well, what you mean? said something very clever to me the other week. You said, uh, out of this, something cool will, will arise. Uh, and I think you're right. I was just thinking about it, like the phoenix arising from the ashes. Uh, yeah, I, you know, so something really cool. special will happen. It's yeah. magic time. Yeah. It has to be because too many people are down. And too many people have lost people. I love that word. It's magic time. It's been magic interviewing you. Thank you ever so much. And I'll speak. Well, thank to you. you very much. Thank you. It's been really, really great.